It's another episode of the Christian Reeve podcast. But before we get into it, are you subscribed? If not, please make sure to subscribe, like and share the video and spread the word. Because the Christian Reeve podcast is here to stay. I love doing this and I love all of you that support me. So thank you. And yeah, let's get into this podcast, shall we? Boom. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Christian Reef podcast. Today's guest is a YouTuber, but he is more well known as an immersive treasure scavenger hunt architect. I think I got that right. Yeah. All the way from Portland, Oregon. Welcome to the show, Chris Waters. How are you doing? I am great, Christian. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no, it's a pleasure, man. Um, <laughs> I, re- I, I found Chris through Reddit and... Um, I was just kind of blown away by what you do for a living. Uh, it just sounds like so much fun. It's it's like, uh, if you put me to say this, but it's, it's kind of like every kid's dream, but then you like realize it as an adult kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Because like treasure hunts yeah. when you're a kid is just the most yeah. exciting thing ever. Oh yeah. You know, you see movies <laughs> like the Goonies or National Treasure or things like that. And you're like, I want to go on a treasure hunt. And you know, you, like, I don't know. I feel like everyone at some point in time has tried to put together some like, treasure scavenger hunt thing for someone <laughs> yeah and i hear a lot of success stories and i hear a lot of horror stories and uh it i you know I, I did one for someone and it blew up and i started doing it and i got better and better and better at it and uh now oh, blew I, up uh, you mean it did well i thought you meant like, yes it, it blew up on the up. internet um <laughs> yeah, okay, it didn't, cool. like there's no explosions i'm trying to think if i've done any that have, that have involved explosions and i don't think so not yet at least maybe all right, all right. Um, so yeah, let, let's let, let's jump straight into this. So it's a very, I've never heard of it like actually um, worded like this. But what what does it mean by immersive exactly? Like, what, what's yeah. the difference between that and a standard kind of treasure hunt? Yeah, exactly. And you know, immersive is such a it's almost like a buzzword. It's it's mm-hmm. weird. My industry, so to speak. It could, it could range everything. You know, a lot of people that like to lump it in with escape rooms because those are popular right. and most yeah, people yeah, have yeah, done yeah. them. Um, and then there's things like immersive theater where like you go in and there's actors and, right. and then okay. there's, there's other things like alternate reality games, like the big ARGs where like it's, it's more or less like kind of internet digital. Usually it's a marketing thing. Uh, the idea with immersive is it kind of blurs the lines between like what's normal everyday stuff and what's part of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's some can delve way more into immersive with like lots of actors and there's a story and there's like, there's motivations and things. And some are a little bit more light on immersive where it's like, you're told to go somewhere and sit on this bench in this park and wait for further instructions. And that's it. And so now you're just sitting here and you're looking around and like a woman jogs by and you're like, is she part of it? And like someone's like walking their dog is like, is that dog in on it? And so that's kind of the <laughs> idea with these days. And it's the fun thing that I hear from the, you know, the players that play them right. is like, doesn't matter. Like most of the people aren't in on this game, right? They're just random people walking around, but you don't know that. And so everybody becomes a suspect and that's part of kind of the immersion. And then of course, someone like slips up behind you with, you know, a wax sealed envelope and they're like, I was instructed to give you this and they <laughs> walk so away cool. and you're like, what's going on? And then, you know, you go to the next stop where, you know, you have to give a password to a bartender and the bartender's like, ah, I've been expecting you. Like, here's your favorite drink. Like here's a box you need to open or here's this and that. And so it's, that's kind of the immersive part of it is you just, you don't know who's in on it, who's not. And it makes it so much more fun. This randomly reminds me, cause I've been on, on similar things. Like I've done the escape room stuff and I remember <laughs> uh, I have a friend. Um, I haven't spoken to him in many, many years. Um, but yeah, he invited me to his birthday, but like it was probably the coolest birthday thing I've ever been to. Cause normally it's just like a party or, or yep. whatever. Right. But he invites me to this, like, I, I don't even know how to put it. It was basically an underground bar slash restaurant, but like, mm-hmm. uh, it was kind of detective themed, I guess. So like, as soon as you got to the, the, I guess, entrance reception, whatever, like the guy is, is in character. Like yeah. he was like, 
part of my language like a proper asshole <laughs> but it was great and yeah. uh, the guy whose birthday it was was loving it and he was just bantering yeah. with this guy and eventually he got what he wanted out of the guy and we got like sort of let in into the secret place and yeah. then it, you, you kind of quickly realize that it's just a, a restaurant with food and stuff but like everyone stays in character like even the waiters and waitresses the whole yeah. time which you know i've worked in hospitality and, and that, that's grueling enough so having to yeah. <laughs> then act and character on top of things yeah. like ah but um, yeah, man, it sounds really cool. But what I, what I really want to know is like, you know, because this isn't a standard kind of career path or, no. you know, the standard thing that one would get into. So like, how did you actually get into this? And also talk to us about the process of setting up your treasure hunts. Yeah. Um, and I can tackle that because the, the first question is a very long answer. And the second question is another very long answer. So you might have to re-remind me of the second part. But Fantastic. Um, you said you found me on Reddit. And that's, right. that's that's how I started. Yeah. For those that might have not been paying attention in the last decade, especially the last two weeks with Wall Street Bets, Reddit is the like seventh most popular website in the world at like ping pongs, you know, somewhere in the top 10 Damn, giant message really? board. Yeah. It's huge. Um, uh, yeah, giant message fair. board basically consisting of tiny subreddits. So like everything has a subreddit, right? You have people that play ukulele have a subreddit. People that are fans of Liverpool have a subreddit. Like there's a subreddit for people taking pictures of like Corgi butts, right? Like the dogs that no, have like there the is a... fluffy butts. Yeah. There's Corgi butts. Subreddit. It's very active. <laughs> Um, wow. And there's a subreddit called uh, Secret Santa, and uh, it's the largest international gift exchange, anonymous gift exchange in the world. 100,000 people sign up every year. You get matched with somebody, somebody else gets matched with you, uh, and then you stalk them uh, and you try to ship them a gift you think they'll like. It's like, you know, I think the recommended amount's $25 minimum. Some people get, you know, shafted. Some people sign up and don't give a gift and that sucks. Uh, they've got stop gaps to make sure and kind of re-gifting. You know, Bill Gates does it and like Snoop Dogg's done it and celebrities, Adam Savage. And so like the person that gets Bill Gates as their Santa is going to get like thousands of dollars and stuff. And it's really thoughtful too. It's not just like, oh, there's a bunch of Microsoft Xbox stuff. You get that. <laughs> but then you also get stuff based on like your Reddit profile or whatever else you link. Anyway, I've been doing it for years. I think I've done it for like eight or nine years now. And then oh, cool. five-ish years ago, I got matched with a guy who lived 21 minutes away from me, which just like doesn't happen, right? 100,000 people all getting matched. The odds of getting somebody, even in your state um, or province or wherever, is very, very low. Um, but I got this guy and I was working in a tech company. And I was making good money and I had a poker game that I just happened to have like taken down three weeks in a row. And I was just like, uh, screw it. I'm going to build this guy and his girlfriend, like this elaborate treasure scavenger hunt to find his gift that I don't even know what I'm going to get him yet. Uh, and so I just started building it and I kept coming up with like crazier ideas where I'm like, okay, well, what if like I send them to the zoo and there's a, uh, you know, clues to animal pens and they're going to use the plaque to decode a cipher and it sends them to a restaurant where the server says, order whatever you want. Everything's been paid for. And then they get an envelope to, uh, with two tickets to a mirror maze and halfway through the mirror maze, someone's like, are you Mr. Royal Scotsman? Which was like his user Reddit handle. Uh, I was instructed to give you this. And then, you know, to the top of a hike and down to a speak. And so it's like, it just became more and more elaborate because I'm like, wow, that'd be a really cool idea if I could do this. And then I'm like, well, I could just do it. So, I had a, a dear friend of mine who's now my best friend and roommate, uh, and he helped me hand deliver a century old suitcase to this guy to start this thing off. And when they were at the zoo and kind of self-contained, he was like, this is a great idea. You're going to start a business. I'm going to build your website. People would pay money for this. What's your business name? And I was like, oh, I don't know, Constructed Adventures. And he's like, cool. Bought the URL, made like a really basic Squarespace website with like pictures of Nicolas Cage from National Treasure and like the lipsum lorem, you know, when you first create a website and they're like a paragraph's going to go here and it's just gibberish. That was yeah. still on there. Um, that website got posted when my, my gifty, the guy who I did the adventure for posted to Reddit and uh, it hit the front page. And so it blew oh, wow. up and I got, you know, 11,000 hits on this website. Um, and I was off to the races. Did it as a side hustle, and then uh, a couple of years ago, jumped ship from working full time to do this full time. 
Wow, that's awesome, man. Like stories like that actually give me hope with what I'm doing that maybe this might actually become my career one day. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's it's all it so takes. <laughs> oh, dude, it's I mean, like it's it's <clears throat> wild because I'm I'm half like an artist and half, yeah. half business. And I listen to a lot of podcasts, and one of them is uh, How I Built This with Guy Raz, mm -hmm. um, which is basically like he interviews like the founders of Instagram and Airbnb and Spanx and Craig, right. like massive yeah, yeah, companies. Yeah. And his last question he always asks, which is fascinating to me, is how much of your success is hard work and how much of it is luck? And Ooh. there are a couple like self-centered people. I can't remember the names, but they're like, it's all hard work, right? And you're like, okay, boomer. Like, no, it's not. There is so much luck involved with this. And like, I think back, you know, when I tell my story, people are like, oh yeah, you got lucky. And I'm like, yeah, I did get lucky. I work very hard. Don't get me wrong. And I'm pretty good at my job. I'd like to think, but I'm very lucky. And like, you know, you think of people like Ed Sheeran, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who like, there's for every Ed Sheeran who just Usher happened to what walk into the cafe that he was singing in. There's millions of Ed Sheerans who are just as talented who will never, never have Usher walk into the cafe that he's singing in. Right. Like, so there's like a matter of being good, working hard and also just like getting lucky. And that was, you know, luck. I think. It's definitely the combination, you know, yes. like if you use Ed Sheeran as an example. I think he's a great example because I mean, he yeah. busted his ass for so many years and a lot of people don't know this and I'd forgotten about this. He was, he was on a show in the mid two thousands. It was in the UK. I think it was, it was either fame Academy or it was Brit school, something like that. Some pop BBC show or yeah. whatever. And he was on that show. And uh, back then, I mean, you know, he was okay, uh, pretty talented, but nothing like, you know, amazing. And even he would say back then, like, you know, he, he didn't, didn't quite have it yet, which makes you kind of think that, like, that took a long, 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 long yeah. time to build up. And I have to say from personal experience with everything that I've been doing for the last two or three years, um, it's taken many years to build, like music, I've been given a lot of comments uh, sorry uh, compliments on that and uh some people are like oh wow you're so naturally talented and i'm like no way this takes many years of practice and yep. <laughs> like i'd say it took me like at least probably like three or four years before i could actually like hold a tune <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you know it's and like stages yeah. And there's something to be said about talent, right? There are people that just like, will never be singers because like they just aren't good. But then like you can take, you know, you can get better. I have a twin brother who's a, a designer for Disney and like, he's extremely talented and he works really, really, really hard. And, you know, that's kind of one of those, those tricks that you see with like influencers or, you know, celebrities or things like that, where it's like, very, very rarely does anybody become a celebrity overnight. Like you have to work at it. And like, there's that, what the Malcolm Gladwell, there's the tipping point, right? There's that point where all of a sudden, like, you know, you get lucky, right? You get, you, you know, even, even after I started this business, I still worked full time. Yeah. I just did, you know, I would work not my 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. job at this mm -hmm. company getting yelled out on the phones. <clears throat> and while I was working, I was hand lettering, you know, letters for envelopes and practicing. And then I would go home and I would work on the website and I would work on these adventures. And then one weekend I would scout and the next weekend I would run it. And I did that for two years. And I basically just like sacrificed my social life. Uh, because this was more important. And then when I did jump ship, I got lucky again. You know, it was another like moment where I was like, okay, I have the money. I have the savings. I'm good enough. It's big enough. Um, I did it. And I got featured in a, the, the, how I built this podcast, like at the very end. Uh, and that kind of set me off to the races. And then since then, I just kind of kept the momentum going pandemic aside, uh, but you know, whatever. So at what point were you like, okay, I got to quit this job. I just don't, I, like, I got I got to go full time with this like yeah. like what what was the decision process there was it like I need more time or was it like this is popping off don't have time yeah. for this job anymore like what was the decision so I, I was working in in Arizona for the software company it was actually a great job and then I moved to San Diego California uh, to get basically the same job at a different company because like San Diego is awesome I could you know go surfing and I could I could do all that and uh, the new job was awful 
um, it was, it was, I, I went from a, a company that was a publicly traded company that like they had everything figured out, right? If you didn't get along with your manager, there was like a thousand other teams that could just like put you on and like, they always worked with you, right? Like every, they had established mm -hmm. SOPs and they could figure it out. And this new company had like, it was old enough to where it had lost like the let's just throw money at these problems and make them go away. Like the tech companies get a ton of money and they're just like, all right, we're going to get ping pong tables and do all this. But like, so they were, they weren't so new where they had that, but they were still so new where like whoever the managers were, were just the top performing members of the team. So they weren't like, you know, there's a difference between being a good like performer and being a good manager, right? Very different skill set, especially if you're in like sales or account management. And so I got on and like, it was, I could already tell, I was like, this is not going to be a good experience. And so I gave it the good honest go. And then I remember, I remember the moment, basically what happened was I was so stressed out at this job and they expected so many more hours where it's like, you're getting paid for 40 hours a week, but they wanted 60 that I couldn't do this business on the side. I couldn't go home and build it. And so one day I remember I had a terrible day at work and I went and I went surfing because that's like how I'd clear my head. You know, you go out there and you know, it's just you in the ocean. It's very relaxing and also kind of scary. And I remember it was just super crowded. The waves were kind of mushy. The waves weren't good. <clears throat> and on the first or second wave that I tried to catch, I just like pour a poor pop-up. I biffed it. Um, fell off my board, the leash, which like attaches your ankle to the board snapped. Mm. And I had to like swim back to shore chasing my board. And so I'm sitting on the beach, just like bored, need a new leash. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is like that rom-com moment where like the guy's fiance leaves him and he's like crying in the rain and like the car comes, like splashes him. And it was like that where I was like, screw it. I'm, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to do this. I think I can make this business work. I'm starting to get people that want me to travel and I couldn't travel because like what I'm going to fly out one weekend, fly back, fly out the next week, like just wouldn't work. Um, and so I put in notice and um, I basically went from there. I put a notice and then worked on getting blown up and I blew up again and yeah, off the races. I'm intrigued. Um, I kind of probably already know the answer, but you sound like you do, or at least you approach, you know, your leisure activities in the same way I do when I'm in a situation where I need to think. Right. Yeah. So like when that was happening, were you sort of consciously thinking like that day you were like, okay, I'm going to go surfing and you know, I'm going to think like ponder this while I'm doing that. Or was yeah. it just kind of like, do you know what? I need to just go do something else and the thoughts will come to me. Was it kind of like that? Yeah, it's it's a little bit. Um, surfing's great because you can either go out and get a great workout or you can just, just swim past, like you can paddle past the break and just sit on your board and just like watch the sunset, right? Like mm. you can get kind of whatever you want and your phone's not on you. Cause you know, like sometimes I'm like, I need to be creative. I'm going to go for a walk and then I bring my phone. I'm listening to a podcast or talking to some, uh, but it was just a great way to kind of clear your mind. So I was doing it a lot. Whenever I live out near the coast, I'm, you know, want to get in the water. Uh, and so it is, it's a great way to clear your mind, but it's also just like a screw it. I want to do this because it's, you know, a good end of the day and it doubles as a workout. Yeah. I, maybe it's just like a creative thing. You know, I've, I've had like other guests on the show that, are, well, I've had a lot of creatives on the show naturally, yeah. but um, I found that our minds work in similar ways. And what I mean by that is like, for instance, for me, you know, years ago, I used to be skateboarding, but now these days it's like, you know, just go for a walk and listen to music. Like, like today I did that. I've, I've taken to doing this every morning now where I just wake up, have a coffee, go out for a walk for like an hour. All right. Yeah. I, it's funny as well. Cause when I was a kid and my dad would like drag me around on summer walks and stuff, I would complain like to no end. I was like, this sucks. And now I'm like, totally just, I've just become my dad. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's tragic. Know. It, it is weird how that you are absolutely right. Like the <laughs> stuff where I was like, young Chris would be horrified, but young Chris would be pretty jacked that like old Chris builds treasure hunts for a living. So oh, it's hell like, yeah. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the, but this whole thing of like, you know, spending time with yourself where you're not really thinking of like, you kind of consciously know, like the whole point of this exercise is to kind of get my brain working and thinking about the problem, but obviously sitting there actually thinking about it doesn't, yeah really help like uh, weirdly enough it's always and i've found this with so many other things in life it's, it's reverse psychology it's like by <laughs> getting away from the problem and doing something totally different that actually helps to solve the problem and then it just hits you like in that yep. moment 
bringing it back to you. You're sitting there on the beach. You know, yeah. I mean, look, the, the whole surfing thing, that has no fucking idea. Sorry, no, nothing to do with yeah. your problem. But like that wave crashing and everything, like on a normal day, you just be like, yeah, I'll just go back yeah. out and get this fixed. No worries. But like yeah. that was almost like a metaphor for like your situation. Like it's like. This was the catalyst. I've, I've always <laughs> yeah, been, yeah. Yeah. Where it's like life, life isn't necessarily easy. But like you can kind of sense it where it's like if you're going in a direction and you're just hitting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock, you know, there are those people like, don't give up, don't do that. It's like, yeah, you should give up sometimes because sometimes like it's not right. Like if you are trying to push in a certain direction and you are just getting crushed every step of the way, you need to try a different direction. And it could be in a similar direction, but just a different lane. But oh man, like that was just, that was that catalyst of like, okay, being jobless is not worse than my situation right now. Like I can, I can figure it out. Um, Dude, and- I, I can totally relate to that. Like, yeah, I've said this bef- before on the podcast, but like um, I tra- I trained to do uh, marketing. That was my degree. Yeah. And I've done that for the last, well, I've been unemployed for the last year, but uh, before yeah. that. Thanks a lot, 2020. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. No, it's, it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And I'll explain why in a bit. Yeah. But um, prior to that year, you know, I'd worked in the field of marketing for three years and I had a similar experience. Um, funnily enough, like in sometime in the beginning of 2019, I was living abroad and I got into a bit of acting. I'd never done it before. And I started doing all of that. And uh, I rediscovered like my love for just all things creative. Yeah. And I kind of had this like disillusion moment, which I'd had at university, but I just like, I just put it down to like, oh, whatever, you know, just ignored my feelings. You know, I I ignored my feelings for so many years. And then it got to a point where it's like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do nine to five. I can't do working in shops and stuff that I hate. And marketing, look, don't get me wrong. Marketing's a uh, great field to be in. It, It can be stressful, but look, they pay you to do like, writing or yeah like yeah ridiculous money for for just essentially nothing and i would laugh at that but then it got to a point where i was like you know what this doesn't make me happy i hate the politics it's not me and when i started sometimes yeah yeah like when i started doing the creative stuff again uh i felt it it kind of began in 2019 but like towards the end of 2019 early 2020 is when it really like sprung almost like a flower and I, I i've been saying this to a lot of my friends that me being unemployed is the best thing that's happened in my life so far like i've I, it's taken me like not being able to find a job that's put me in a position where i've worked harder than i don't think i've ever worked in my entire life like this podcast youtube channels yeah. you name it like and bringing it back like the the point i'm trying to make here is that like as you said like there's different things you try in life and sometimes it doesn't work out and like i guess i thought oh i'm supposed to do marketing but i guess i kind of thought to myself like oh maybe maybe not everyone is supposed to to follow their dream and you know maybe i'm just one of those people that's supposed to do the nine to five and maybe i do a little bit of stuff in my free time or or whatever i kind of i was giving up as sad as it sounds like i was that was me giving up and then i feel like life has kind of said you know what you're not going to get a job you're going to keep doing this you're going to use this time which i because i don't know i don't know how it is in the states but in the uk when um when you're unemployed and you're seeking benefit and all that crap yeah they want you to do to apply for jobs and stuff right which I do every day and I've had interviews and stuff. Like, it's not like I haven't tried, but it's like, yeah. it's just not happening. And in the beginning, it used to bother me. Now I'm like, it, this is society. This is the universe. Yeah. Stop it. It's the universe saying, no, 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 keep doing this. Cause it's going to work out. And, yeah. and like, eventually you, you, you can get away from this benefit stuff, probably go self-employed or whatever, which is yeah. funnily enough, something I've been kind of fearful of over the years like oh self-employed i don't know I, uh but that's what you should do in life get out of your comfort zone and do those things that are like scary and you know because let's be real like yeah you could do the safe option have a job but like even in a job they could just fire you any minute so you're never yeah. really safe <laughs> yeah it's it's so interesting um because i agree with you i when i worked for that company i always would tell people like i'm I'm not a guy who's meant to sit behind a desk all my life, right? And it's like, when you go to school, like that's basically what you do is like, you go to school, there's no like entrepreneurial classes or like small business classes. You just kind of do it. Um, 
And, but I, I do, the caveat to that is it is not for everybody. There are people that just have really great fulfilling lives. They work, you know, I, I have a, my best example is like when I first started the business and I went full time, I was like, everybody should have their own business. This is great. And I had a friend who's, she's a nurse practitioner. So she's a nurse. Uh, I wonder how she's doing now, but she was like, honestly, like, I love what I do. I love what I do. I work three, four days a week. I make great money and I have tons of time off. Like I've got a great thing. And I'm like, actually, yeah, that sounds pretty great. You know? So there's definitely something to be said about it's not for everybody for sure. It's stressful. Uh, you tend to work a lot more, um, at least especially in the beginning, but it is really nice where it's like, you know, I have this and I have a couple consultation calls later today and I'm doing a live stream, um, on my YouTube channel, like later tonight. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing, you know, and it's, it's fun because it's me and it's me telling stories and it's me talking to people and helping people. And it's not me picking up the phone and getting yelled at by some angry client for something that I have no control over. Yeah, to totally agree with you. Um, actually, I do want to pr press this a little bit more before yeah. we go, go back to fun stuff. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I think it's interesting for people to know your sort of journey into this and stuff and, you know, to, to know like what has become before, because it gives it gives people hope. Do you know what I mean? And I think one thing I wanted to add to what you were saying just then is that like, and I know it's cliche, so forgive me for those listening at home, like it really is about whether or not you're happy. Like if you're happy working in a factory, yeah. work in a factory. Like yeah. if you're happy, because that's the thing, we, we compare things so much in life. And like, I had to learn to, to do this years ago is to just don't give a fuck what people say or think. Like, are you happy? Do you enjoy your life? If you don't change it, no yeah. one's going to change it for you. It's up yep. to you. But if you enjoy your life, it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. It matters yeah. what you are doing. That's always the first most important thing ever. Yeah. Um, and different people find fulfillment in different things. You know, right. Some people yeah, like yeah. they want to work and they want to get married and they want to have a family. And that is awesome. And like, yeah. now I think you're finding a lot more people don't. Um, I'm definitely mm -hmm. one of those people who like, oh, I don't know, like before, before 2020 happened, I was traveling 80% of the year. I was traveling all over the world. Like oh, basically wow. clients are just bankrolling me to fly out to their state or country and build a ridiculous thing for their wife, for their business partner or their family or something. And I go and I do that. And then like, you know, I went to Barcelona to do a proposal and I'm like, you know, I'm going to hop over to Switzerland because I've always wanted to see Lucerne, you know, <laughs> and like girlfriend at the time was like, Hey, can I come? And like, I'll, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you can just stay in the hotel. <laughs> like it's no, no extra cost. Oh, like, let's go to France after. So fucking cool, man. So like that <laughs> that basically was it where it's like I get to explore a lot of cool places and I built up my reputation well enough to where I was booked out far enough in advance to where I could, you know, if somebody reached out and they're like, hey, I want you to come do one in Houston, Texas, which like, I don't like Houston, Texas. I can be like, sorry, I can't because like, I'll find another client before then. So I don't have to go to Houston, Texas again. Um, but yeah, it, it, it allows me to be a little bit picky and also, you know, do cool things. You know, there's in the beginning, you take every client you can and you get some times where it's like, I'm doing this adventure for this guy. And it's like, like he really doesn't care about this. Like his, his friends who hired me like this a lot. And like, I wish I'd known that. And so it allows me to be picky about who I work with, the people that I build the adventures for, and also where I go. Where are the best places you've been so far? Uh, Kauai, Hawaii was, was one of my favorites. I've been to, I've done one on Maui and one on Kauai. Um, a lot of the major cities are pretty fun, like in the United States, like San Francisco is awesome. New York's awesome. Um, Barcelona was incredible. It's just like, there's just so much going on. Um, I'm trying to think, let me look at my, I can pull up my like master list of adventures and see what's, uh, if there's anything else that uh, rings a bell. DC, Washington DC is fun because it's very like national treasure. Uh, Nashville, Tennessee, I really enjoyed. Seattle, Washington actually is very, very cool, but you got to worry about the weather. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I'd say Hawaii, you know, understandably, uh, Hawaii and Barcelona are probably my favorite too. 
And your life is so cool. <laughs> no, not right now. Being an event planner in a global pandemic is not fun. I can tell you that. Nah, that nah, was, nah. Uh, I get that. You know, it's been nice because I've been able to like get a nicer camera and get a microphone and do finally start the YouTube channel of like tutorials and build mm. up the subreddit and do those things. So hopefully, when I come out of this thing, I've, I've got a lot more going on. But man, oh, when that pandemic hit, just like. Every- was just like, well, you're just suspended because like, I'm not going to fly to another state and try to put this on, you know? No way. Maybe, maybe in a way it's kind of a, a blessing in disguise. Like like you said, you, you got a chance to do other things. I think sometimes yeah. it's, it's good to take a break as well. Like I'm a massive 100%. workaholic. Like I work, like I said, this is the most I've ever worked in my life ever. Yeah. And sometimes I, I do have to like force myself to just take a day where I don't do anything because it's... Yeah. Because that's the that's that's the 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 blessing and the curse thing with with enjoying what you do. It's like yeah. yeah, it's great to enjoy what you do. That's that should be the goal. But at the same time, yeah, you need you need to take a break. Otherwise, your yeah. body. I, I saw this the other day. It said you need to choose a rest day, or your body will choose it for you. <laughs> yeah, and my rest day is always on on a Sunday, unless like I do an adventure that day. Because like I'm not super religious in any way but like it's an easy excuse of just like yeah, no. yeah, yeah. and like i don't take calls on saturday or sunday because most of the time the adventure is on a saturday and in that case like it's all hands on deck that's yeah. the only focus uh but yeah sunday is usually the day but sometimes i want to sometimes i wake up and i'm like ah, oh, you know i'm gonna shoot this little video really quickly that'll be fun you know i find joy in this and like it's a cool experience sitting there and be like okay like what if you know what if I'll utilize this cryptex and we'll do this as the password. And then this awesome plaque that I found over here is going to be like the key to the cipher and they open it up and it sends to the next location. Uh, you know, that kind of inspiration is fun. It doesn't feel like, Oh, I'm just doing a marketing email. You know, I'm just going to do this and this and this. Some days I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to answer any emails, but <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Talk us through the process of, of like actually setting these up. Cause I mean, yeah. I'm kind of intrigued. Is it just you? Do you have a team sometimes? Like talk us through like a normal day. Like, yeah. Great, great question. So it is just me. I have people that I hire out. Um, okay. You know, like I have like a, you know, a CPA, like something that handles like the businessy side of things or just like making sure I don't go to jail for like tax evasion accidentally or something <laughs> like that. Right? Yeah. 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 Um, and then I hire people, uh, when I'm in the area, I have on my website, there's a link at the top. That's like, Hey, do you want, to you know throw your name on this list and if i'm gonna come do an adventure in your town i'll check you out and vet you and reach out and pay you to come help you know it could be something as simple as like you know handing an envelope to somebody at some point in time or it could be something much more depending on your abilities and skills and like what you have to offer and some people are like listen i just want to hand an envelope and like have a fun smile on my face and other people are like i own a boat or a restaurant or i'm an actor a musician or like i train dogs and we could train a dog to do something or like you know just it gives me options with this but <clears throat> to step back as far as how this works basically what happens is somebody reaches out on my website. Sometimes people call me or email me, but the website's just the best because it helps me stay organized. Um, And they basically give me the purpose, like what the reason for the adventure is. Most of the time it's a marriage proposal anniversary. It's a birthday, Mm. usually like a decade, like, you know, 21, 30, 40, 50. Um, Sometimes it's like a marketing (laughs) promotion thing for companies where they want to do like a big group game and they want to be like, we want to send people to these bars to try this liquor and we're, you know, we want to do it in a cool, fun way that's memorable. Um, And then the date and the location. Mm -hmm. And then we chat, uh, we have like a 15, 20 minute conversation just to make sure like, you know, where the right fits very early on. doesn't happen much anymore, but very early on people would be like, I want you to come do a bachelor party for me in New York city. And my budget's $200. And I'm like, dude, I can't even fly to New York city for $200. Like, this is not like we have, we definitely like I don't, I did something in my website you missed to accentuate, like, it's going to be expensive, you know, doing any type of event just costs money, just the random cost of things. What do you reckon um, was like your, is the minimum? Do you think? Minimum is like, usually $5,000 American. I was going to say like, it, I total. think that's, it's going to, yeah. Like, yeah. I couldn't imagine anything less than that. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, I charge a flat rate myself. So I'm making the same amount roughly. The flat yeah. rate changes a little bit based on like how big, you know, mm-hmm. the event is, but usually it's the same. Cause usually it's a one day event in this like good formula. 
Um, and then it's just whatever it costs on top. And so the nice thing about that is like, you know, the difference between you driving yourself, you having a black car drive you around, you having a limousine drive you around, or you having a helicopter fly you around is like zero to two to three thousand dollars. So it's like, do you want a helicopter? That's going to be two to three thousand dollars. So at the very end, I'm just going to charge you two to three thousand dollars, however much that helicopter cost, right? If you go into a restaurant and the server says everything's been covered, order whatever you want, and you spend $75.43, I'm just going to charge you that at the very end on top of my flat rate. So what ends up happening is we have conversations. I send a pretty in-depth survey that has everything from like phobias and allergies to like on a scale of the movie Hitch with Will Smith to the movie National Treasure with Nicolas Cage. Like how do you want your adventure to feel? You know, where do you want the budget to go? Do we want to involve more people? Um, and then we start to work out like what the, what the theme is, if there is a theme, what the perceived purpose, like if someone's getting proposed to, we're not going to get them out of the house saying like, you're getting proposed to, there yeah, needs to be yeah. a cover story. There needs to be like, you need to, you know, here's a cryptex, you need to get it open and then follow the clues and figure this out. And then maybe they get it open, like right when the person's proposing and there's a ring inside and he pulls out the ring and he like proposes to him. Right. Um, or she equal opportunity, <clears throat> but um after the survey, um, I send a contract, take a deposit, and then usually we have like six months to a year until the adventure. And so then at that point, I'm just checking in with them once a month being like, hey, I haven't taken your money and run off to Mexico. You're still dating the person that you're throwing this proposal for. You're still, you know, friends with the person or it's your kids or parents. Uh, and then usually a little more than a week in advance, I fly out. Um, oftentimes I'll schedule like kind of back to back to back to back. So I'll do like a tour of adventures and then take a month off. Um, mm. But I'll fly out and I will uh, scout all the areas that have been like pre, uh, pre researched everything. So it's like when I, what, what area do you live in? Uh, Lon uh, sorry, Manchester. UK. Manchester. So in that case, I'll, I'll have gone on TripAdvisor and Google and like Manchester Visitor Center. And I will have found the places that are cool. And I will have worked with you um, to see if there's any places that have emotional meaning to, you know, girlfriend or parents or friend or whoever it is, right? If it's a proposal, there's plenty of emotional spots, right? You got to hit a lot of those like first date spots if you can, or like places where there are memories. Uh, and so it's kind of combining those. And it's just like, this is an awesome bar or this is an awesome park, or this is a really cool opportunity to do something spectacular. Uh, and then the week leading up, sometimes there's a drip free drip feed of like breadcrumbs where like they'll be at the grocery store and someone will come up and be like, happy birthday. Like here's an envelope. And you know, it'll be like, you need to be completely available on this day at this time, further instruction to come. And then, you know, they're at work and like the secretary's like, Hey, this came in for you. And it's another wax sealed envelope. And it like has more information. Um, some of them are very puzzle heavy. Some of them are not at all. It just kind of varies on the person and whether they're the kind of person that like puzzles. Um, and then, yeah, then the day of, uh, I plan a GPS tracker on them and the whole day is scheduled. So, you know, at 10 AM, they, you know, a car pulls up and they get in. Google Maps says it should take 13 minutes to get to this restaurant where the service says order whatever you want, everything's been paid for. And then they, you know, get instructions to go here and they, you know, an actor comes up and has this. So the whole day's scheduled, myself and the people that I hire are behind the scenes, pulling all the strings, making sure everything is like running smoothly until, you know, whatever the grand finale is. Who are some of the coolest people that you sort of worked with um, when setting these up? Um, I have a lot of actors that I work with now. I love working with uh, improv actors because they're just kind of uh, fun. They're not super, you know, like involved. Like they just want to have a fun time and do cool things. And they're, they're like, they're okay playing a role in public, you know, and st committing to that role. Um, so yeah, the actors and, and sometimes I'll work with like street musicians or like street performers too. Like they come up and then like this person breaks out of the performance to do something just for them and like play that. It's uh yeah, it's really just that, but actors are just, they're fun to work with. What are some of the uh, not so great places you've been where like maybe, I, I don't know, like maybe a place you didn't necessarily want to go or yeah. <laughs> like you sort of turned up and then it was like, ah, oh, this isn't exactly yeah. what i thought it would be <laughs> yeah houston texas is the big one and it's just like <sighs> oh, <excuse me. clears throat> yeah 
Houston, Texas is just there. Not to say there aren't cool spots, but it's like, if you go to like San Francisco, California, there is just so much like quirkiness and culture. Mm. And it's like oozing with like stuff. Like there's bronze plaques and statues everywhere. There's this, you know, tower up here. You go to a speakeasy bar that looks like a pawn shop where you have to haggle your way in. And Houston, Texas just like, it has strip malls just as far as the eye can Uh, see where it's like, Oh, you have a Denny's next to a Burger King next to a TJ Maxx next to a Best Buy next to four Starbucks. And then between that and like the weather was just like brutal. Like it's so hot and it's so humid and the roads suck and everything's far apart. Um, Not a huge fan of Florida either. Florida. um, Pardon me. At least in like the Miami area, it just, it felt almost like empty just kind of felt like everybody's like there's i don't know there are some places that are more apt and people get more into it and it feels like you know texas and florida were two places i was just not a fan of but once again you could go to austin texas which is way different or you could go to um i don't even know what part of florida is a good part of florida but (laughs) jesus none of it most of the time (laughs) don't Um, at me (laughs) I want to keep this on the negative vibe just before we bring it back to the positive, uh, just to get the negativity out of the way. I'm going to kind of <clears throat> oh, yeah. bring it down, but you know, I think it is, it is kind of interesting because people assume, Hey, this is a great job. It must be great all the time, but shit happens. Right. Um, oh, yeah. What are some moments that like were, you know, maybe the worst things to happen yeah. or worst moments, mistakes, oh, yeah. uh, people reacting badly, like throw us some of your bad, stories yeah 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 <laughs> uh, and this this happens too i i do a lot of consultation and i teach a lot of people and the first thing is like something's gonna go wrong every yeah. single time like you can't run an event <clears throat> without having something go wrong because there's just too many factors right the reason escape rooms work so well is because they're in this contained environment with cameras someone running the show <clears throat> they have play tested it millions of times <clears throat> pardon me and uh but with these events, like you can play test things, but you just, there's some things you can't test out, especially mm. in the area a week in advance. <clears throat> the first, the first one that went really wrong was adventure number. I've done 74 or three of them now. How long have you been uh, doing this, by the way? Uh, I, I started the first one, construct adventure number one was <clears throat> uh, December, 2015. So five oh, years. Oh, wow. Quite well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But the first, the first one where something really went wrong was Constructed Adventures number 11. <clears throat> and it was a team offsite for one of the teams that I worked with um, at the company that I worked for. Oh, like I started nice. to build up and they're like, oh, can we do an offsite? I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. And one of the big things for me is I, one of the things that makes this fun is the surprise, right? You just like wake up and there's a knock at the door and all of a sudden you're thrust into this adventure. And like, that's a really fun experience. You didn't see it coming. But with this team offsite, they all knew this was coming. So I wanted to create a surprise. But what I ended up doing was they were all working together. And then halfway through, I basically like split them up. So they were competing against each other. Mm. But at this point in time, they'd already stopped at a bar. Some of them were a little drunk. And the instructions (laughs) were like, everything relied on them reading like this envelope and really sticking like, taking every piece of information of like, you need to go South one block and then move over. And so it's just like, it just got, I, I got so far up my own ass with like detail and like, I have been thinking about this for three weeks. So of course, like this is how it's going to work, but like drunk 12 drunk people are not going to follow directions mm. with one line in a paragraph. You need to hit them over the head with it over and over and over again. And so they still had fun, like, thanks, alcohol. But like, for me, it was like, this did not go well. I had another one, <clears throat> which was uh, number 17, uh, called Margarita Madness. And it was a, a woman basically was, uh, she basically got clues to go from bar to bar to bar to bar. And at every bar, there was another friend. That friend brought them a margarita. And then that friend was part of the adventure, didn't know what happened next. Besides a bunch of the friends like showing up late, which was really frustrating, they were all military. And fun fact with military, especially in San Diego, um, most of the time you can bring your military ID into bars and you're fine. And it works out well for people that just get out of like the basic training and they're like underage, so they still get in. But it was just, it was a busy day in San Diego and none of them brought their state IDs even though they all knew that they were going to, it was margarita themed and they didn't bring their IDs. And so they like, didn't get 
let into the first bar and then i was like oh god and so i had to rebuild the adventure as it was going and it was oh wow how did you do that how did you pull that off uh so what i do is i always have extra envelopes with their name written on it that have been waxed already yeah um and then opened with a knife and so then if i need to i can just lick the envelope shut and it still looks like it's been wax sealed but like you know the illusion is still there so I essentially called up a bunch of bars and I was like, hey, I'm doing this thing. I have people that are of age, but they have military ID. Can I bring them in? And so I'm moving friends around and coordinating and basically just like rebuilding the instructions as the event went. And luckily, since they went to bars, like they get into a bar restaurant and they'd be there for an hour. So it's like, cool, me and my team have an hour to find a new place, get get in touch with the server, take the envelope the server was initially going to give after and give them a new envelope and then then work forward. And uh, let's switch it up. What are some of the best moments, the best things you've been able to pull off and, and greatest times you've had doing this? Yeah. Oh, God, there are a lot, there are a lot of best moments. Um, the, the proposals are my favorite because they're so high stakes and like, you know, you're creating potentially the best day of someone's life, you know? Has anyone ever said no? No, of course not. I okay. wouldn't take them as a client if that was the case. I've but how would you just, know? Like, in oh, the moment easily, happens. Like. <laughs> easily. Because for me, as far as, and this is important with Valentine's Day coming up, uh, the surprise in a proposal should not be that you're proposing. It should be how you're proposing. So right. whenever somebody reaches out to propose, literally the first question I ask is like, is there a universe where he or she says no? And most of the time there's a chuckle and it's like, no, we have been dating for eight years. No, we have gone ring shopping. No, we are doing foster (laughs) classes together. No, we own a dental (laughs) practice together. So it's like, okay, I've had a couple people where there's a pause and it's like, how long have you been dating? And they're like seven months. And I'm like, I just can't do it. I'm just not going to take that. Like, yeah, yeah, I would be fine. But like, I don't want you to spend the money. I don't want to take that time for that kind of risk. So no. Yeah, I can imagine someone saying, saying no in that scenario because like, it, especially when you build this whole thing up that someone's clearly spent a lot of time and money on and then they just yeah. go, no, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> in that case, like, I, I feel like most people, like most of the people that have gotten proposed to have seen it coming, you know, where it's like, oh, all of a sudden there's this like elaborate day. Like what else could it be? So they'd have time to like get out if they wanted to. Or, you know, if they just say yes and then later be like, no, like I didn't want to crush you on the day of, but like, no. So yeah, it's uh, proposals have been my favorite. I pulled off some really fun things. I had a, um, uh, a woman flown via helicopter to a wild animal park where an otter came out and handed a clue. Um, I did oh, another cool. one with a sloth where they like went into like a sloth enclosure and it was like asleep holding an envelope and they just like <laughs> grabbed it and like pet the sloth and like headed out. Um, I had oh, people wow. dive, uh, free dive down for like a treasure chest in Hawaii. Uh, that was very cool. I've had people intercepted like in airports and kind of like, you know, I was trying to push the envelope of like, what's a cool experience I can get away with and how can I get away with it um, without getting in trouble or getting anybody, getting anybody in trouble. Wow, man. Um, have you ever had any kind of like weird behavior from the people sort of receiving this like anything that just sticks out or, or just where you were like huh that's a bit strange or i mean like- the biggest thing is is nothing strange anymore at this point <laughs> my the, the thing is and especially for people that might listen to this that want to build their own a go to my subreddit because there's a lot of cool information and my youtube channel shameless plug but you when you build this you're so wrapped up in the day and you've given so much thought into this sometimes it's easy to forget that the person hasn't because they don't know this is happening so something that's super obvious to you is not going to be obvious to somebody else you know a really good example is like a cryptex like most people have read or seen uh the da vinci code right um where it's dan brown Oh, there we go. Um, You know, you have the cylinder where you have a stripe and you have to line up a password, right? Mm -hmm. You line up the password and you get it correct. Make sure because I can't actually see it. And you pull it apart. And here I can actually make the sound for podcasts, right? You pull it apart and inside (laughs) there's a key or there's something. But assuming that somebody knows what a cryptex is, is a big mistake because some people get it and they're like, what do I do with this? They don't know. Oh, I need to line up the, you know, the letters with the line or the arrows. Like I've had people that 
figure out the password and don't know what to do with it, which like you wouldn't think you'd have to explain, but you do sometimes. So I always kind of, especially if you're doing, we're doing something with a lot of people, you need to factor in like the slowest, dumbest, fattest person. And you never make assumptions that anybody has any idea what's going on. Mm. Uh, always err on the side of being too detailed and too clear with your instructions. People like to do like a vague riddle, which could have like a thousand answers. And they're like, I can't believe they didn't get that answer. And you're like, of course they didn't. This is a terrible riddle. And like, don't use riddles anyway. So that's the big thing is people react in weird ways and they do weird things. Uh, and that's just how people are. What's the um, the weirdest request you've received as far as like setting up a treasure hunt? I've had a lot of requests. I mean, I, I, I'll get, you know, a, a handful every month and most of them don't come to fruition because, you know, logistics or money or something like that. Um, I had <clears throat> one guy that wanted to ask a girl on a date with this. And I was like, bro, you're setting your bar <clears throat> way too high. Don't do it. Like, <laughs> You're setting yourself up for failure because if this is how you start, like, where do you go from here? Yeah. And also like, you're going to spend, and that didn't go very far because once I was like, yeah, it's going to be thousands of dollars. They're like, Ooh, actually. Okay. No, I'll just DIY it. Um, I've had that. I've done a redo proposal where they just like, they did a proposal that was very like spur of the moment mm. and wasn't a bad one, but they wanted to do something more grandiose. Uh, and so I did that. That was a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah. And then every year for Reddit Secret Santa, I sign up and whoever my gifty is, I send them on a wild adventure to find their presence. What qualities do you think make the perfect treasure hunt? Uh, definitely uh, like, seem like serendipity or what seems like serendipity where everything just kind of works, right? Um, you know, we're, we're selfish humans. We like to have things be about us, right? You can argue that everything you do is a selfish act. Uh, but as adults, you kind of get, you know, pushed down and like, you don't just be like me, 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 me. Cause everyone's like, okay, fuck that guy. Like, I don't want to hang out with that person that makes it all about himself. But like, you know, a birthday or proposal is about you. And so it feels really good when everything's about you, right? Like, you go to the bar and it's your favorite drinks already there, right? The verbiage and the clues is mm. like, you know, callbacks to like your conversation you had with your siblings in childhood. Like the wax seal is your favorite color. It, it takes all of your favorite things and it basically makes this day that's completely about you that you were completely unprepared for or you didn't see coming, but you're still kind of prepared for. I can put that, I didn't put that in the right way, but it's like, you're completely blindsided by it. So you get this wonderful surprise where everything just revolves around you. There might be challenge and puzzles, but it's stuff based on something that you can already do, right? You're not just getting hit with some impossible puzzle you've never heard of. You either already know about it or like, you know, you're ready for it and prepared for it and you get that dopamine hit. So I think that's really it is just making sure everything just feels so wonderful. I just want to say as well, if anyone that I love or, or a friend of mine or family is listening right now, like I've never had anything like surprise, never had a surprise party, never had a proper party for that matter. Yeah. Um, so get me this. I want this. <laughs> this is awesome. And for people listening, for, for Christian's friends and family, if you want me to come out there, I will cut you a deal so I can fly out to Manchester <laughs> and do and you know, like i will most people would charge more for international adventures i will charge less i want i What's want that? because i want to go out there you know uh, like, okay, okay. you're telling me that i have an opportunity for someone else to fly me out to another country i will do whatever i can to go go to that other country i've done plenty in phoenix arizona and san diego and seattle <laughs> not that i don't love these places because i'll do them again but like, if I have the opportunity to do an adventure in a new place, that will take precedence. Do you, I know this will sound harsh, but do you ever turn down people just based on that? Like, oh, not Phoenix again. Screw that. Like, <laughs> um, More or less, it's less about the place. Cause I like to, I like to shit all over Houston and Florida, but like realistically, if they did it, I might do it again. Cause like I'm, yeah. I now have establishments and contacts and it gets easier. Okay. I have turned down people based on how they act in the first call and how they are. Um, I'll have people that reach out and they're like, I will not have a 15 minute conversation with you until you tell me the cost. And I'm like, cool, sorry, not gonna work. 
Like I not, I'm not going to work with you because if, if people approach this and the only thing, the number one thing they care about is money, it's going to make for a bad experience because it's going to hamstring me because we're trying to nickel and dime this thing. And it's nice when I have somebody that trusts me, that's like, mm. you know, I, I'll come up with an awesome idea. And it's like, okay, here's an idea. Like, here's a, here's a great one that I love. Um, I had this guy and it was in Idaho Falls, Idaho, which means it can be anywhere. You can do it anywhere, right? I don't, I don't even know if you've ever heard of Idaho or Idaho Falls. Yep. And you probably don't need to because it's a state that you, I can't even pick out on a map and I live in the United States. Oh, wow. But it's a tiny town. I'm joking, but it, it's a tiny town. Uh, the guy there, his wife hired me. She was awesome. And he was awesome. And he, he owns... Uh, um, or a couple franchises. He owns a couple. He actually uh, did really well for himself. And so we were researching with like what he, what he loved. Um, and one of the things he loved was philanthropy. He loved giving money, charities and things like that. And so part of the budget, when I send the budget or the, the contract with the budget, it's like, I'm expecting it to cost this much for me to travel. I'm expecting it to cost this much for the materials. I'm expecting it to cost this much for the people that I hire. And then I always have a flex budget, which is like, this could go into any of these things if I go over budget or if I have a great idea. And so the idea that I ended up having was we found this amazing restaurant. Um, it was very well reviewed. It was like kind of this mom and pop kitchen. And I love using those types of places. And I, I reached out just like I normally do. Like, hey, can I send them here? We're going to have a puzzle to figure out. And they open up. And it was actually Cryptex. Um, they have to open this up. And they he, he finally gets it open. And inside is a $100 bill. And it's like, you're going to use this $100 bill. And you're going to tip the server who's been picked out specifically. She's had a tough month, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm basically taking his own money and he donating his own money mm. to somebody. But the experience that he got you know, with this kid, you know, this girl who just like, you know, had a tough week, tough month, worked with the manager, like who deserves to get a hundred dollar tip on a, you know, $50 meal. Uh, and it was this person and it like made for such a great experience, uh, even though it was like pretty simple, but that was, that was kind of a fun, a fun risk that I took with like someone else's money. And it ended up being super memorable. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah. I want to ask you like, Obviously, Easter must be like a big season for you, given like the whole, you know, structure of the business, what it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that was the You're talking like of... Easter Sunday? No, no, no. Like Easter eggs, like the scavenger. Okay. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Is it a thing in America? Like, because what? Okay. I'll explain. Yeah, it in, in the UK, when, yeah, when I was growing up, like an Easter egg hunt, a treasure hunt was, yeah, yeah you would just go around find chocolate eggs and yeah. maybe you get them, like, maybe yes you wouldn't. No, I'm, I'm trying to think of what Valentine's Day ends up being big. Um, okay. okay. Because it's always like romantic and people are doing a bigger experience. Um, Easter, not as much. Oh, um, okay. Just because like, I mean, how often is like, who's going to spend that much money on an Easter egg hunt, right? Somebody will, guarantee you somebody will. The reason I but, asked though is that like, yeah. and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to know about the requests because given that you you know, okay, like you, you're charging a lot of money, but like it, it's worth it. It's high quality. Yeah. That's the reason why. But obviously yeah. when things are more expensive, that tends to attract, you know, richer people and they want to do yeah. more outlandish things. They want to spend a lot, a hell of yeah. a lot more money. And like you said before, it's not all about money, but like, I would think like, even with like Easter, like, you know, if they'd say, Hey, I want a gigantic egg, like, yeah, you, know, you could maybe make that happen. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's definitely in the realm of possibility. Uh, and you know, it's just like, I'm, I've only been doing this for five years and I've only been doing it for full, full time, you know, two and a half and okay. 2020 was effectively a wash. I did two adventures before the pandemic hit mm. and then one adventure at the very end because it was very close and it was for the Reddit secret Santa. So I went from doing, you know, God, 20 to 30 a year to doing three. And so we'll, we'll just see like once, once we finally get through this, which it looks like it's going well, at least in the U S um, yes. And actually in the US, man, like I can't believe you guys had the super bowl with so many fans there. Like I was, I was sitting there like going, Jesus, I hope like all those people are going to be okay. Cause that's, nuts. that's Florida. It was in Florida. Okay, that Good makes figures. sense. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, Florida, but still, Florida. there was so many people there that are not from Florida that surprised me. Like, um, yeah. Okay, like for example, um, there's a lot of professional wrestlers that I know that that were were there, and I was thinking, like, 
I mean, you guys have to wrestle week in, week out in what is essentially like uh, bubbles, you know, like yeah. that's kind of why it's being allowed to happen. Yeah. It's because they form these bubbles and they don't really yeah. go out of them. Um, so then when they did this, I was like, really? Like, ah. I know it's, it's, it's mind blowing to me and we'll see if it becomes a super spreader event or not. I hope feel not, like it's like not. we've become so desensitized. I check the NCOV website every day that has like a nice count made by that like kid. And it's like, well, US is very close to 500,000 deaths and no one's really talking about it because like, wow. you know, Trump impeachment, everything else is going on. So it's just become like, everyone's kind of bored of it now. And it's like, <laughs> it's very laugh, American, yeah. right? It's very American to become like bored of the pandemic because it's like not new news where it's like, we'd rather talk about GameStop stock. You, you don't give your... That was an I, awesome story. But. I honestly think it's fair. Like, I mean, and this is the one of the reasons why I, I actually try to keep my mentions of it on the podcast or anything that I do to a minimum. There was a point on YouTube where I was doing like regular updates, trying to, because, you know, it was interesting to say like, hey, here's what's going on in the UK. And I yeah. found that there's other people around the world that like, you know, don't know that because obviously, okay. you know, news is... Uh, distributed we, differently around we don't all go on bbc.com every single morning to see like what the world news is right <laughs> yeah plus they don't always necessarily report like accu accurate stuff you know like yeah. i wouldn't trust the bbc i would trust other other providers but like my point being that like you know in the us you have like a certain idea of what's going on in the uk and vice versa but yeah. you won't really know unless you talk to someone who's there living it you know yeah uh, and that's why I was originally doing it. And then after a while, I was like, do you know what? I'm sick of talking about this. I'm sure yeah. people are sick of hearing about it. I need yeah. to do stuff that will take people's mind off it. Hence, yes. podcast. Yep. Um, but anyway, mo moving it forward, I want to know about your props. Like, in terms of um, setting these up, do you make your own props? Do you have someone who makes them for you? Like, what's the process of building this stuff? Yeah, so I very rarely will make any kind of prop. Okay. Um, I'm trying to look around and see if I have anything like... Well, I'm just looking at everything behind you, to be honest oh, with yeah. you. Like these big chests there. <laughs> yeah, um, I did one with... Um, this is a great example. Like uh, the pendants from Legends of the Hidden Temple. If you remember that show, I don't know if that show aired there, but it was like this kid's show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did like a competition for somebody's birthday. Um this was actually a really fun one. I had a, another podcast called Endless Thread, which talks about Reddit. Um, the whole point was finding me for their interview. They had to like do an adventure. <laughs> and halfway through, they got this key, uh, which like you'll need to use it later. And when they finally arrived, it, like, it's a bottle opener. And so like I hey. used it to crack open the three beers that I had on the table. Uh, I'll, do, I'll use a lot of like leather bound journals. Mm. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I feel like for the podcast side of this, you don't know anything, but like leather bound journals. Um, so I'll where, explain for, for, for those listening. Um, it's, it's, it's like the, the stuff looks like really good quality, to be honest yeah, with is. you. It, it looks yeah. like, you know, so is it, is it's not like, okay. Um, the reason I say prop is, is obviously because of the acting industry. Like sometimes you have, like if you take this uh, leather bound sort of diary thing that you got in your hand right there, yeah. to me, that looks like genuine leather. Is it, is. Is it leather? Okay. Yep. So you yeah. use real material. It's, this is genuine leather. This was gotten, there's a, a little kiosk in Pike place market in Seattle, okay. which is like that famous market where they throw the fish. Mm -hmm. um, there's tons and tons of little shops. And every time I go to Seattle, they're my favorite people. And I will buy, um, I will buy tons of the journals, big ones, small ones, and they're all leather or they're some type of something. Okay. And they, they use this interesting kind of like recycled paper and I'll use them or give them as gifts. The smaller ones, I'll do like an Indiana Jones, um, Nathan Drake, Uncharted style adventure where like the journal is filled with to the brim with like drawings of maps and encoded messages and stuff. And as they go through the adventure, stuff starts to make sense where it's like, there'll be a drawing of like a statue and then like some coordinates of like, oh, a compass steps. And then they'll get to a park and they'll be like, wait, that's the statue. And then they like stand in front of the statue. And then they're like, okay, we get a compass and we're gonna take these steps. And then it gets to like, you know, there's a key hanging from a tree on the other side of the park they walk to, and that opens a chest that tells them where to go next, right? Uh, so yeah, the, the big thing for me, one of my big, I, I did a YouTube video on my top 10 rules for adventures. And one of them is like presentation is everything. Yes. 
And it's not difficult to go to a craft store, go on Amazon and get brown envelopes instead of getting like white legal envelopes that like, you know, you're just going to send a bill in the mail. And like, you can wax, you can get a wax seal for five, $10 and you can get wax sealing sticks. And it's not difficult to, to go that extra step uh, to make things nice, but you can buy chests. There are good chests you can get. Um, and sometimes I'll have somebody that'll build something for me if it's in the budget, but most of the stuff you can find online or just like in shops. Yeah. I was, I was going to ask you, that was my next question uh, in, in terms of like where you source it. So like, we're just talking general stores then you just find the yeah. stuff and you go, okay, I need a diary. That's I'll go on. Yeah. I yeah. Know, some, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes there's like, and it's at the point now where it's like, I have gambits and I use the term gambit. It's like anything that propels them forward in the adventure i have gambits that just work they're just they're fun they can work with so many things like i love doing the journal gambit where just a bunch of stuff's in a journal it's a cool experience every journal is going to be different so whatever goes inside is completely different but still the notion of like all of the clues are housed in this and everywhere they go uh you'll see behind me there's a chess board um mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. got letters written on it there's another youtube video that i teach how to do that it's called a knight's tour puzzle where you move a chess piece around the board and it spells out a message <clears throat> just a cool experience. It's a puzzle that's not too difficult, but just challenging enough to do during a meal. And you can take any message as long as it's 64 characters, like 64 letters, and you can make that the message. So it's still for them, even if it's using those gambits. Um, but then, yeah, there'll be sometimes where I'll just like, I'll find something online. Like I have, I have pens that when you write something and you run a flame across the page, it'll, it'll erase that ink. So you can hide something behind that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just haven't used that yet because I have yet to find the time. And I'm also super worried that someone's just going to friggin' light the page on fire and not, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's, I'll, I'll find things where it's like, this is going in the book. This is going on the list and I'm going to use it eventually. Can't use it yet. And then it's just about finding the right client and the right player to use this gambit on. How much does this tend to set you back as far as like cost is concerned on a regular basis? Like I understand that it will probably, it will vary according to like the details of what people want and stuff, but like on average, like how much is this setting you back? Well, this doesn't set me back anything because the client pays for it. Um, oh. like if, if I use a journal, that's part of the materials cost. This journal was $20. And so at the very end of the adventure, it was like, yeah, you pay me my flat rate. This is how much the meal costs. This is how much the journal cost, And that's it. So most of the stuff is covered by the client. Oftentimes I'll get lucky and they're like, Hey, no, we, we don't need to keep, like most people want to keep like a chest, right? Just because they look cool, but some people don't. And especially like the corporate big group clients, they never do. And so that's one of the reasons why I'll do like a big corporate thing because a, I can charge a lot more because companies don't care. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sounds bad. But like I'm gonna no, charge go a for company. It, get that yeah, money. <laughs> I'm gonna charge a company a lot more than I'm gonna charge a guy proposing to his girlfriend because yeah. most companies have worked with event planners and most people that are getting somebody to build a proposal have not. And so I wanna I like to keep I keep things as transparent as possible, but you know, if a company's got gonna have 10 teams, I'm gonna buy 10 cryptexes. And then like if they want to keep some of them, they can. Like it's fine for me. I'm gonna charge them regardless. But if they don't, I will keep it. And then I can either keep it as props for myself or I can use that for the next one and then, you know, go there. What are the major differences between like how you approach the corporate events versus how you approach the individual events? Oh God, they're wildly different. And corporate events are just large group games, which I've done non-corporate large group games. Think of like a bar crawl treasure hunt type thing. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the big games and if uh, I don't know what time it is over there, but in four and a half hours, I'm going to be doing a live stream talking about one of my big group games on my YouTube channel with my twin brother, who's my designer. Um, but with big group games, it's all about crowd control. Uh, with the small adventures, you're on the rails. So it's like, if I'm going to send you an adventure and it starts at 10 a.m., I can, you know, I know that by 2 p.m. you're going to be at this bar because I have scheduled it so. But when you have 20, 30, 50, 100, 500 people, you can't do that. And so it becomes about making it open-ended, at least in my opinion. Oftentimes I'll use a map, which you can see right there. Mm -hmm. There we go. I can't figure out which way is left. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, the map behind me. And basically every team will get a map 
and they'll have checkpoints they have to find and hit, but they can hit those checkpoints in any order that they want. So you're kind of in control of your own destiny as far as like the route you want to take. Most of the time I'll do something along the lines of like, okay, here's the deal. Your team has to find the finish line. And then once you find the finish line, which is like a bar or like a restaurant or a private room somewhere, um, once you find that finish line, you have to have a password. And so it becomes like two challenges, find the bar, get the password. And oftentimes finding the bar will be something along the lines of like, um, you know, they have to uh, do a bunch of scavenger hunt items um, where they have to like, you know, videotape, record, you know, doing fun, stupid things, interact, serenading strangers or like, you know, doing a dance in public, those kind of fun things that you see all the time. And like, once they text that in to a certain person, they hit that threshold where it's like, the bar is here, right? This is where the bar is, go here. And then you could do a password, <coughs> pardon me. Another thing that I'll do oftentimes is I'll do like, there are 10 keys, actually, here's one right here. Um, so this I'm holding up is like a little orange key. Um, I bought like hundreds of these and painted, you know, 20 of them orange, 20 of them green, 20 of them blue, 20 of them purple. And at every stop, there's some type of challenge or puzzle or something. And when they complete that, they get one of the keys. That's and what cool. they need to do is they need to find the bar and that's by the scavenger hunting. And once they get there, the bouncer is going to be like, I need you to give me 10 different color keys. Oh, wow. And so if they have all 10 keys, they can do it. And maybe there's 15 stops. So they don't have to hit every stop and they can choose the route they want to take based on the strength of their team. And all some challenges will be, you know, very easy to find, but like a very difficult challenge when they arrive. And some will be very difficult to find but once they find, they just like grab a key. And some will be kind of a mix where it's like a physical challenge where it's like, there's one key that is like 10 miles driving distance away. You can go, but you're, you're losing 20 miles or, you know, 20 kilometers of driving distance. So it's like a risk reward thing to yeah. give people like how we want to do this. If you have a bunch of people that are super puzzle heavy, they're going to go to the ones that have the most challenge. If you're going to have ones that are, you know, very athletically inclined, they're going to have to like <clears throat> scale a hill to get to the very top and talk to somebody. So it's just about trying to spread these groups out. So there isn't just a log jam and everyone's at one stop at the same time. Awesome, man. Uh, what advice would you give to people who'd like to get into this sort of field or, or this kind of thing? Generally? Yeah, uh, you can reach out to me. I have a couple of protégés of people that I just ah. you know, help. I mean, there needs to be more and having more people do this. Like before the pandemic happened, I was booked out like six months to a year. Like Damn. there's plenty of people. I know go me very lucky, very good built up a thing, but like there's people that reach out where it's like, man, you were perfect. Like you have the budget, you have a great attitude. It doesn't benefit me. Like this birthday's happening. We can't just push it back or reschedule it, but it's great when it's like, I know somebody that could do this and I can kind of hand them a warm lead ah, and then, and then work with them. And, you know, eventually it's like, Hey, I'm going to hand you this and I'm going to take a finder's fee, but not off the bat. Cause that would suck. Cause they're still figuring it out. Right. Um, just start. <laughs> Uh, try to create some magical experience for people. Uh, if you go on my YouTube channel, I spell out all like the formula that I use, all those things, including different gambits that I like to use. Um, the subreddit's great too, because it's a lot of people doing recaps and asking questions and being like, ooh, what about RFID codes? Like, what about using playing cards? So there's a lot of help. Um, I've, I've really, I hate people that are like, I don't share any of my secrets unless you're paying me. Cause it's like, all right, cool. I just like, won't listen to you anymore. Like there has to be some level. And if you want, I do consultation. So I'm happy to actually schedule I actually in uh, 30 minutes. I have another consult call. Um, and uh, yeah, just, but just start. Uh, if you want to do this, you're going to have to do it um, as a side hustle for a while, as you build it up, you know, there's, you'll always be able to find an example or a reason to do it, a friend's birthday or something like that and do it for free or cheap or at cost in the beginning and learn and get better. And then uh, eventually, um, you know, do it as a business. Thanks for sharing, man. I just, I just want to say on a side note, I think it's really cool that you're training people up to do that. That's a really Thank awesome you. thing to do. I mean, and I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I'm very um, sort of, uh, open with everything that I do as well because you know I think in life we, we should share everything it doesn't make any sense yeah. to, to keep things to yourself I mean you know especially in this well. case. 
it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't hurt me to have somebody else succeed. And like, this is a, this is an industry that there isn't, you know, like if you want to become a barber, you have a great clear shot, right? You go to a school to do that. And then you either buy a chair or you wrote your, you know, it's like, there's the thing, but there is no like, Oh yeah. If you want to be an event planner that builds treasure hunts for a living, like this is what you do. Like there's nobody yeah. doing it. So I can be the one that like kicks down the door and then like holds it open for other people to get through all the better. And like there's the industry is awesome. It's very, it's like, it's like the board game industry. If you go buy Settlers of Catan and you get four friends together or three friends and you play it and you have an awesome night, like the next day, A, your friends are going to go buy Settlers of Catan and you're going to go back and buy another board game, right? If you if if somebody else hires somebody and they have a great experience, they want more. And so they're going to try to find me. It's like escape rooms, right? The escape room industry loves each other because mm. like, you know, the worst thing that can happen with an escape room is that somebody has a bad experience because then they'll never go to any other escape room. If they go to an escape room and they have a great time, they're going to hit every single one. And so yes. it's like everyone's building each other up. <clears throat> everyone's helping each other, exchanging tips and tricks to make sure the user experience is as fun as possible because it, you know, rising tide brings up all ships. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. Just switching things up. Uh, I just wanted to share a quick story with you. Uh, this is something I mentioned to you off camera, for, but for those listening, basically uh, me and Chris happen to have the same microphone. And I realized this has nothing to do with, with everything we're talking about, but I wanted to bring this up because of what we were talking about in the beginning about, you know, how it's funny how things work out, how they work out for the good. Now, um, I did, I was working for this, this business in, uh, in a country called Estonia in sort of the tail end of 2019 going into 2020 funnily enough i actually quit the job early february of last year and then came back to england after having lived there for three years right and uh here's the funny thing so i'm in that job i'm at that point i'm sort of let's say six months to eight months into back into youtube and properly doing it but i don't have any professional equipment and everything i have is trash you know i'm still building up even at this moment but think yeah. you know how it is things get better i just got these led lights you know a month or two ago and they really stepped up my game <laughs> yeah it, it just happens it's gradual progress yep. but uh the funny thing uh that i wanted to share is that this particular microphone i have was a microphone that i was using back then now uh, i was working for this company i won't say who because i never give specifics but uh it was this company and um they wanted me to do uh like a, a podcast podca sort of like a podcast like a business kind of thing where they had articles they wanted me to sort of say it yeah in um in a, in a podcasty way they call it a business podcast let's say it's a business podcast <laughs> and um they had this guy in the States doing all their stuff for them. And uh, then he said like, oh yeah, I want to charge you more. And they were like, nah, oh, we've got an English guy here. We'll just use him. And I was like, it makes <laughs> sense to me. I need yeah. the experience. Everyone's a winner, right? Because yeah. I wanted to do podcasting and, and get into that anyway. Uh, so I start doing it. Uh, it's very different though. It's, it's like, I have to put on my best professional voice and you know, oh, yes. all this shit. Right? I have my voice too. This is right. my television yeah. anchor voice. Yeah, everyone everyone has like their different voices that they do, right? Yep. And I had to do that. And it was actually a lot harder than I than I thought it would be. Uh, but it was a good practice for the podcast. Um, and since then, I've done like sort of two podcasts. This is my main one. Uh, we're, we're close to 70 episodes now. So it's, <sighs> it's really, it's going, it's going well. Uh, but back then, I think I did maybe like 20 episodes of that business podcast and uh if people are interested by the way i can shoot you links to that um but anyway. the show notes <laughs> maybe i don't know i don't think it's that interesting personally <laughs> it's just me talking about like boring manufacturing stuff i don't know if anyone's really interested in that um maybe some people well people manufacturers would be but yeah <laughs> anyway um the funny thing, the thing I wanted to get to the actual point of the story is that at the time uh, I was sort of gradually coming to an end with this company. I really was homesick after three years of abroad. I wanted to come back to the UK. I wanted to keep that job and uh, I was negotiating that with them, but it didn't seem like it was going to happen. And I said to them, well, look, if we, we can't come to an agreement on that, maybe we can come to an agreement on this podcasty type stuff. Maybe I can do this on a freelance basis for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
you know, I was going to try to negotiate in that deal to keep the microphone because I knew that that would be good for me. Yeah. Uh, but I, we didn't even get to that point. And they rather harshly kind of said to me like, and I don't know if it was just them or just a cultural difference or I don't know, whatever. Uh, but they kind of said like, oh no, yeah, no, we need good quality. And I was kind of like, so you don't think that I can deliver good quality? And I knew that they meant, they said that it was the mic, but I think they kind of expected like everything in general. Yeah. I kind of got a little bit offended if I'm honest. And, uh, and I was a bit annoyed because I was like, oh, I'll get a good microphone one day. And <laughs> this is the weird, funny thing. So back then I was looking at that microphone, like this is a good microphone. I like this. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. And then fast forward to about a year later, um, a friend of mine, shout out to Stilzy. Um, this, he's a Twitch streamer of mine. He's been on the show. He's, he's a really good guy. So I'm just doing this Twitch stream and uh, he decides to just randomly donate a bunch of money to me. And I'm still blown away. Even to this day, I'll shout him out every single chance I get an opportunity to do so. Uh, Cause it's the first and only time that someone's ever like donated anything to me. Uh, yeah. And it was a big amount. And I was through that, I was able to get like a cheap guitar to do music again and to yeah. get this microphone. And as soon as I bought it and I got it and I unwrapped it, I was like, man, I have this microphone in my hand. Like, six to eight months later after being told oh yeah you know basically like you know you're, you're not gonna get to have a microphone like this you're not gonna get to do this and now yeah. i'm doing this and it's way better than doing that business podcast thing yeah. and you know i'm on track to doing things like getting my first sponsor and stuff so you know nice. things are headed in a, in a good direction right now that's awesome and i just i just wanted to quickly share that story because i found that funny and uh, I just found it funny that we had the same microphone as well. And it, I, the main point behind all of this is that like things will work out and the universe works in very weird ways. And I think if anything, I was given that opportunity back then to practice with that microphone specifically, because I was going to get it later, but yeah. I just didn't realize that at the time. And it's just weird. <laughs> it is funny to think about manifestation and just like, yes, you know, knowing what you want, you don't have to know how you're going to get it, but you can have that idea and you can visualize it a little bit. And yeah, you will get everything you want. But I think the important thing is that you have to believe like most people don't believe they give up like me with this whole YouTube thing, like things are beginning to happen now very very slowly and that's the thing it's a it's a waiting game it's not it's slow and slow and slow and all of a sudden there's a tipping point and yes. then you're just like oh yeah nope i agree with you, you just got to kind of keep banging your head against the wall and improving and whatnot but uh yeah and then hopefully coming out of a global pandemic and ready to you know keep going absolutely absolutely right mo mo bringing it back to yourself um so you currently reside in portland oregon yep one of the best and worst things about portland oregon uh, Portland's weird as hell. Um, that's kind of our thing. Uh, keep Portland weird. Uh, we were, we popped up in the news, uh, over the summer because of the protests. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, because of the, the George, the murder of George Floyd, mm -hmm. uh, and Portland, Portland's an interesting city. It's the whitest city, whitest major city in the United States. Oregon okay. has a not good history of racism. Um, uh, fun fact about Oregon. Yeah. It was like illegal to live here and not be white until like the 1920s, which is just like not wow. long enough ago. Um, so that's a problem. But despite that, it's very inclusive. It's very LGBT inclusive. It's cool. very, yeah. Like it, it has its issues because america and we all have those issues but um it is very weird and very quirky and there's lots and lots of just cool stuff um it is very rainy all the time the pacific northwest is like just it just constantly is raining it actually is supposed to snow we're supposed to get hit with a winter storm which doesn't hey. happen like, it doesn't snow in portland oregon despite how north it is like it's mm. so far north you think it would snow no it's mostly rain yeah it's so everyone's kind of panicking right now and like buying food for like the next three days of oh, snow because wow. they don't you know they don't shovel snow they don't have snow right. plows because it doesn't snow enough like why bother spending the money on that but it's beautiful it's, um, you know, you can drive a couple hours and you can be in the forests of Endor from Star Wars, right? Oh, like, no way. That's yeah, so cool. It's all super close. Uh, and then the coast is right there. Water's very cold. Not a fun surf trip. Um, 
but uh, yeah, Portland's amazing. I've only been here for a year. I'm actually going to be moving again in uh, mid June when my lease is up, um, leaning toward LA. I was actually didn't have a home for about two years because I didn't need it. <laughs> you know, I was traveling oh, wow. so much. Yeah. I just put everything in storage and got a PO box and just bounced around from adventure to adventure to adventure. And then if so I needed to go home, living in hotels then or something or... kind of, or just like, you know, I'm 35. I have friends that are now successful enough to where they have a house with a spare bedroom. And so like, I'll be on the East coast of the U S and I'll be like, Hey, can I stay with you for a week or two? And they're like, hell yeah. And so like, you know, get to see friends and stuff, but it's been nice, especially in 2020 having like a house and a bed and stuff. Um, but yeah, I was, I was going to say, because I've never had a go. Well, I've had one guest on the show who's a professional wrestler, so he could kind of, uh, yeah, travel no, he could, he could relate to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not often I talk to someone who doesn't have like a, well, you have a fixed location now, but you didn't before. Yes, like, how correct. does that life kind of compare? Do, do you ever kind of feel like, ah, oh, shit, like I don't have like a base of operations or like, how was that? Yeah. That it was, it was stressful at first. Cause it was like, I, I, I jumped ship in October, 2017. Uh, and then in March, 2018, my lease was up. And this is when I was in San Diego, California. And I just gotten back home after being gone for an entire month and like change. Uh, I think it was a month and a half. And I was like, I just spent thousands of dollars for my stuff just to sit here. Uh... Like, why am I doing that when it's like and i already knew where i was going to be for the next like five six months where it's like yeah this is my schedule like i'm going to be in nashville and then i'm going to be in new york and then i'm going to be in you know like chicago and i'm going to be here and here and here and then i go home for two weeks and it's like how about instead of going home for two weeks i'll just like hell i can go visit my parents i can go stay with my brother i can go visit friends i can use all the points that i've amassed and just get a hotel room somewhere right like so it kind of just became that where it became this fun challenge and it was stressful for sure, but it wasn't as difficult as I thought. Mm. And so coming out of this, I might do that again. I'm just trying to figure it out. It, it really, it's hard to justify spending like one to $2,000 a month on a place to live when I'm not living there, you know? But, okay. So you said that, you know, in 2020, and and now too, like you're not really getting the opportunity to, to do them for obvious reasons, right? Yeah. Which is giving you time to work on all the other things that in a way you've been neglecting. Like I, I, I would imagine you've kind of got like two options sort of moving forward. Like, let okay, hypothetical, yeah? We get through this pandemic back to business, right? Do you, A, like employ someone to do all this stuff for you, recording, managing, all that stuff, and you just focus purely on the business? Or do yeah. you, B like sort of doing on or on off sort of things like one month you're doing it one month you go back to doing this stuff but you're home based like yeah i mean what what do you reckon is is realistically the option for you moving forward we're gonna see i think one of the things that i'll have now going forward is i'll have a slightly more established um following isn't the right word, but like, I've kind of like, if you go to the YouTube channel, like I've got stuff there. It's kind of exciting. Right? When you first start a YouTube channel, you're like, why isn't anybody subscribing? And you're like, oh yeah. Cause I have like one and a half videos shot on my phone and they're not yeah. very well edited <laughs> yeah. or not edited at all. And so like, I've got a laptop and so I can edit video, you know, all I want. And like, I have a camera that'll travel with me. Um, just like a little Fujifilm mirrorless camera that'll travel with me wherever I go anyway. And if I need to set this thing up in a hotel room with a ring light and do a quick video, um, I will do that. And so my goal when I start to travel again, definitely won't be able to do like, I don't know if I can do a live stream every Wednesday, mm -hmm. and um, but I'm going to try, you know, if I can do a live stream on a Wednesday night, just like a quick Q and A, um, why not? Uh, and you know, some of the videos can be, or they're, they're one minute, really simple videos. I'm just about to record one after this. Um, basically about using a deck of playing cards and uh, a really fun puzzle where you literally write a password on the side of a deck of playing cards and shuffle it up. And then you build a puzzle based on putting the cards in order. And when they put them in order, the password's on that side. That's not going to be super difficult. I can literally just zoom in on a deck of cards as I do this and do a quick voiceover and it's a video. So we will see. I do tend to get wrapped up in an adventure when I do yeah. an adventure. So this might be pie in the sky goal, but I do want to try to keep this thing going because my goal when I come out of this is like, Hey, I've got a Patreon and Patreon's up to a hundred bucks a month, which isn't something, but it isn't nothing. Right. It's like, you know, it's, it's, 
it's that. And if I could build that up to the point of getting this content and being like 50, 50 event planner content creator, it'll give me a much nicer work-life balance, I think. Um, and it'll make me excited either time that I switch over. I think you have the same problem as me, which is, a, don't get me wrong, because a lot of the time when people hear the word problem, they're like, oh no, that's a negative thing. No, it's a good problem to have. You're too busy. So am I, right? I've said this so many times to people, like I need uh, an editor, a graphic designer, social media guy, because I do so much with content yeah. creating. And I've said this to friends, like I just don't, there's not enough hours in the day to do all of this stuff, yeah. unfortunately. But you have the same problem that I have. And it's like, you're just not big enough to be able to afford it. And I, I'm saying that in a nice way, right? Like yeah. it's just, you yeah, have this no, issue. You're right. And this is how I was with events where it's like, you start off, and you desperately need an assistant, mm -hmm. but you cannot afford an assistant. And then you get to the point, you know, the way you fix that is just like getting better and getting faster and getting like SOPs, you know, standard operating procedures. But then eventually you can get something and they have them available where it's like, there are three or four people that all pay $10,000 a piece for a year for an assistant. So the assistant makes 30 K and it's like, I would have trouble. I had an intern once. I had a guy that wanted to intern and I had trouble finding stuff for him to do because I just like, I, it's, it's tough because you also don't trust people to do, like, I don't trust people to do as good of a job as I am, even if they're better or to understand my vision. So it can be a little bit tricky. I didn't mean to sound mean where it's like, no. like you aren't big enough to have an, a, an assistant, but it's like, I no, 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 dude, like, dude, dude. I don't have the money for that right now. I, I totally, no, I don't take it offensively. Like you, I'm a business guy. Like okay. I, the thing is I've had people come to me and be like, Hey, I'll do this for free. I'll, I'll essentially like do this work for you. And I just, you know, I don't believe in not pay, paying people for their work. Yeah, me too. Like I, I, I know exactly what I would give someone as far as like work is concerned. Like I've already got stuff lined up in my head. I haven't like properly formulated everything, but I know, <laughs> that it would be like social media editing yeah. oh, graphic God. those those are like the three you know and eventually like videographers later down the line like when, when i go okay so for instance like one of the things that i do that i haven't done in a while is uh, urbex and i want to do that as a big thing in the future when i have money to travel and and yeah. equipment and all this shit right uh like i had the vision and the ideas and everything but it is a case of as you say being big having the money not so much about being big it doesn't really matter how many subscribers or whatever it's more about the money thing like yeah and I, i've always been very good at like reinvesting money and, and like using it and, and making too. things work and i've been able to do that in the past sort of year and a half i've been able to raise the bar ever so slightly but you know as you know it's, it's a gradual process it takes time and um i, I think in a way it's, it's kind of good that it that it goes that way i mean it's it's kind of forced me to be creative and and try other things and yeah work around the things that i don't have and and try the best to, to create content and make things work you know and that's yeah. if anything that's more important than actually having the equipment it's like yeah you can buy all the equipment in the world but if you don't have the ideas and the vision and the structure then it doesn't mean anything you know yeah but uh anyway um yeah i just i just want to say like a massive thank you for agreeing oh, you. To, to be on the show it's, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and hearing about your life and this just crazy fun job that you have. Um, my, my final question for you today is, do you have any kind of like a major upcoming projects that you'd like to share with us or maybe some final thoughts that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean, just uh, in anything, the shameless plug, if you want to find me, it's Constructed Adventures. So Constructed, past tense, adventures, plural, dot com. Um, I have uh, the things I place on most active are Instagram at constructed underscore adventures, uh, YouTube, you could literally honestly just Google constructed adventures and you'll find all of these things, but Instagram, YouTube, and the subreddit are the three biggest. Um, I have, gosh, I probably have seven or eight adventures that have either been suspended prior to 2020, or they're just kind of waiting for me to sign a contract. Um, and uh, so once, once I get the jab in the arm, I'm off to the races and I'm going to be traveling. I'm very, very excited. So yeah, doing that, a couple other potential projects, um, just working with people, uh, maybe a, like a, there's a treasure hunt, kind of like a escape room style treasure hunt that we're in talks with doing potentially in Maui, which could be really fun. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm, it's been fun. I've been helping somebody build a treasure hunt into a book that they're writing, which is kind of exciting too. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so cool. So it's, uh, 
it's been it's been exciting and fun but uh yeah that's all i got going on brilliant man um yeah like literally thanks again for for appearing on the show everyone listening to the christian reeve podcast if you're listening on youtube spotify apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to the show make sure you go and check out constructed adventures i had a little look um when i was doing my podcast research and yeah, it's very professional the way you set it up and everything and it's yeah it's a lot of fun definitely something yeah. you should check out and, and you should build uh, an adventure adventures are fun and the world needs more absolutely i couldn't agree more um yeah i hope that you guys have enjoyed this uh if you're not already if you're watching on youtube make sure to like share and subscribe if you're listening on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, wherever you listen to the christian reef podcast please leave us a review leave us your thoughts feedback let me know what you like dislike i want to hear your thoughts i want to know what you think and also let me know if there's any guests that you'd like to see on the show any particular topics that you'd like to hear on the podcast let me know my dms are always open thank you very much for listening and until next time peace out one love i'll see you in the next one